So today we have another article about Monster Hunter, which yet again the article is pretty shitty, but at this point it's not even me doing this to kind of debunk the articles or anything, it's more so just to show why people don't pay attention to gaming sites and any kind of articles that they write about the games and why YouTube content creators have become more prominent and why they're the source that people kind of look to when they're thinking about trying a game. So right off the bat we have a title, Monster Hunter Stories 2 feels like a watered down Monster Hunter. Okay so right off the bat I'm thinking whatever you want to call Monster Hunter, if you want to call it like an action combat RPG, it, honestly I feel like Monster Hunter is kind of in a genre of, of its own and doesn't really fit in any of those, but regardless, high octane combat, blah blah blah, all that stuff. So right off the bat, comparing that to a turn-based JRPG, obviously you're setting yourself up for failure if you're thinking that you're going to have a turn-based RPG that's going to be as action-packed as an action combat game. So that's number one. But we keep going and, you know, it starts off that it's not too bad. I don't get that urge to play Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin, you know, I'm not scrabbling for my controller the moment I get home in a desperate bid to take my pet monster, Sandra, out for her daily fight. I think it's because Monster Hunter Stories 2, the second in a new series of turn-based RPGs spun off from Monster Hunter Prime, just feels like a watered-down Monster Hunter. It takes the well-known bits from the mainline series and packs into a Pokemon mold, but only some of them stick while the rest spill over the edge. And see, at this point, I mean, it's not bad. You know what I mean? Like the article and stuff like that, it's their opinion and everything, but like, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, they're gonna dive deep into why it feels like a watered down Monster Hunter and all this stuff, and okay, so we keep going. I've spent a few hours with Monster Hunter Stories 2 opening chapter, which basically is a tutorial island. I can't speak for the depth of the story in stories, but it seems, you know, fine. You play as the grandson of Red, a legendary bloke who tamed and rode a big dragon. See, like, right off the bat, some of these, like, like this, the beginning of this paragraph and stuff, you can, you can kind of feel the tone already, and you can kind of feel, you know, you kind of feel like the author's already made up their mind. You know, they have a preconceived notion in their head, and there's no way that they're going to get off of that. They kept the peace, which was nice. And you're a fledgling member of his rider tribe, folks who make friends with monsters, breed them, and fight alongside them. The tribe affectionately call them monsties, a word that makes me wretch and I hate it. See now, this is something that I actually do have to agree with. I mean, monsties, I don't really like using monsties either. I think it's a little bit goofy, but yeah, as far as making me wretch, I don't know about all that. But yeah, I definitely think they could have went with a better word than uh, monsties. Anyway, since Red effed off, nasty monsters are now gasp on the loose. And this is something that we're going to see in the art article too, is these kind of like tongue-in-cheek comments or like, very, very sad attempts for humor, which honestly, I mean, in a game review first off, I, I really don't feel like you need to do that, and it takes away from the actual review and giving people the information they need, but my god, this dude tries hard for some laughs or to throw in some a little bit of hilarity in there and fails miserably. Is up to you, a cute anime child, again, going back to the tone, to become a true writer and figure out what in the fresh hell is making these powerful monsters so larry all of a sudden. This is achieved by gathering your very own party of monsties and knocking the ever-loving crap out of island wildlife in turn-based battles. See, just his wording and stuff like that, it's just annoying. <laughs> I don't know if like the last one was like some kind of I don't know if it was like back to that one article where they were like upset that you hunted monsters in Monster Hunter. I don't know if that was that kind of comment, but still, just uh, it, it just gets worse and worse. These fights are absolutely the best bit of Monster Hunter Stories 2 so far. It's classic Monster Hunter King Lizard battling, but distilled to a turn-based system that's simple, but really fun. King Lizard battling. It's just, the more that you read it, 
the more that you realize that this dude has never played Monster Hunter, and if he has, it was maybe like once or twice, but you can definitely tell he has no idea what Monster Hunter is, and he calls it a watered-down Monster Hunter when he has a very vague idea of what it actually is. In the most basic terms, it's a game of rock, paper, scissors, but replace those words with power, speed, and technical attacks. On your first encounter with a monster, you'll need to learn its attack patterns and cater yours accordingly to deal extra damage. So if they're nimble, for example, they'll likely use speed. Technical beat speed, so you'll lean towards these attacks initially. Honestly, this is probably the best part of the entire article, because he actually gives you information that you need and does a good job of explaining things, and he drops the whole comedian act thing and stops trying for some cringy humor. I say initially because fights in Monster Hunter Stories 2 often feature curveballs that keep the turn-based combat feeling stale. From feeling stale. You might encounter a raptor chicken that whips out a boulder and uses it as a shield mid-fight. That's Kulu Yaku and honestly he probably uses these things because he played the game and then he was making the article after and didn't remember that it was Kulu Yaku because he has no idea what's going on in Monster Hunter. Just gotta reiterate that point. To counter it, you'll need to switch to a blunt weapon like a hammer to smash it to pieces. You might find that a Puke Puke's tail lets it blanket your team with poison, which is highly unpleasant. Well, you can target that body part specifically to lop it off and prevent it from ruining your day. Honestly, not bad. Not bad. A good, uh, another good portion. Your monsties there by your side the whole time too. They'll attack on their own accord unless you instruct them to pull off a specific skill of which they have a couple early on. Some have healing spells, other bombs, charges, the usual. If you find one monster ain't doing it for you, you can swap them out between turns. Five monsties form your party. My favorite being the wonderful Sandra. She's plucked straight from Jurassic Park and looks like one of those docile herbivores that do things like graze and move in herds. Again, this is an Aptonoth, but like I said, just probably has no idea what an Aptonoth is or the name or anything like that, so he's just doing the Sandra description Jurassic Park thing because he doesn't know it's an Aptonoth. But in battle, she's a ferocious beast who has healing spells to keep me topped up and the special move that knocks down enemies for a term so I can wail on them for guaranteed critical hits. I also have Gareth, a blue raptor who's been with me from the very beginning. Obviously we know Velocidrome, but he doesn't because he doesn't know what Velocidrome is. He's speedy and powerful, but his appearance frightens me. He has razor sharp teeth and bulging eyes. I imagine he'll try and eat me later on. It's just... It's just sad at this point because I, you kind of get the feel that like as he's typing it, he's like, oh yeah, they'll laugh at this one. And uh, yeah, as you can tell, we're definitely not not laughing. And then I do have to go up to here. Uh, this little shot right here of Steve, aka Seregios. I'm afraid to announce that it does not look as nice as this in game. I do, however, want this big dragon want this big dragon because like I said he has no idea it's Seregios because he has no idea about Monster Hunter in my collection which I think we can all pretty much agree that Monster Hunter Stories 2 looks pretty damn good honestly it looked really really good in the demo but let's get back to the article I particularly particularly Enjoyed the ability to ride my monsties into battle once I dealt enough damage to fill up a blue orb shaped gauge Not only did this replenish our health It lets you pull off a kinship special move that features a cool animation and often ends with the monster you targeted Basically being nuked from orbit So for the most part Monster Hunter Stories 2 combat captures that unpredictability of classic Monster Hunter Although they're not particularly challenging the fights feel organic and sometimes messy as opposed to a rigid number trade. And see now when he says they're not particularly challenging, I will, I'll definitely say that the demo itself was not too too challenging, but I guarantee you he did not take on that second trial. Because yeah, if you want to gold that second trial, that shit was rough. 
By the way, Gaijin has a nice video on uh, how to do that. I actually did it in a similar fashion before that video came out and whatnot, but the way that he does it, I can definitely say, yeah, you, you'll be able to gold that uh, second trial because I know a lot of people have been having a problem with that. Um, back to some more cringe, I will call mine Pal. Do you get it? Because its name is Palamut, and it's a play on work. Yeah. Um, hilarious. Gathering your monster companions is cool too. You get eggs from monster dens, which are basically dungeons with paths and chests and materials scattered about. Once you've nabbed one, you can hatch them back at the base. I like the collectathon, but I did find it hard to compare monsties at a glance. Why? Because yet again, he has no idea what's going on with Monster Hunter stories. Probably didn't play the first one at all. Probably just played the demo, you know what I mean? So, can't really tell what's going on as far as like, genes and stuff. So just kind of let that be known, you know? Throw it out there like, hey, I've never really played this before, but here's what I think. But he kind of approaches it like he's played before, or like he knows the Monster Hunter experience and this is just a watered down one. When presented with two identical monsties, I struggled to decipher which one was better than the other. Hmm. I mean, it's kind of obvious when they have the stats right there. And then, honestly, I mean, the genes really aren't too hard to look at and kind of tell you what they get. So, I mean, honestly, it just feels like he kind of just threw in a couple hours and then threw out an article. I had no such trouble with armor and weapons, all of which you get from the local smithy. Hand in materials and monster parts you've gathered out in the field, and you can make some sweet looking gear. Another classic Monster Hunter feature. I had this armor set which made me look like a lobster with multi-colored flares. Unlike other Monster Hunter games though, you don't need to craft individual armor bits. As long as you meet the requirements, the smithy just bangs out entire sets in one go. I appreciate this because I'm lazy. Okay, so... Something tells me if they're the type of person that's lazy, doesn't like to grind, this and that. Something tells me he really did not play Monster Hunter that much or played it for a little bit. Because I can promise you if you're a lazy person, Monster Hunter is not the game for you. But I imagine those used to treating their equipment like an Excel spreadsheet may be left wanting. I can give him this. Honestly, I mean like if... That is a good way of looking at it if you're talking about like it being a little watered down Because yeah, usually you have to craft head chest arms legs all that waste Everything but in this one you just have to create one armor set That's probably the one point that I actually think yeah did a good job Thinking about it the lobster flares combo might be the nicest looking thing in Monster Hunter stories too. the cartoony aesthetic is charming on character models but zoom out and the world seems flat. Hard disagree. Even in just the demo, it felt like it was huge. Because we weren't able to go to certain areas and whatnot, but the stuff that we actually did get to do, I thought it felt nice. It was vast and it looked gorgeous, man. I absolutely loved it. So, I mean, hard disagree. But shockingly so... I get that it's made for the Switch, so blowing the visual up onto a large monitor isn't ideal, but boy does it look rough on PC. I don't know, man. I guess we're going to have to wait for that one, as far as like it looking rough on PC. We'll see how that looks, but stepping over to the side, my feeling when I step out into the world and feel like I'm playing the game on my PS2. Cell shaded graphics, it ain't for everybody. Definitely wouldn't agree with this part. Definitely a huge reach, and I hope... I hope that this dude said the same thing with Breath of the Wild, that's all I'm saying. And I'm afraid the quality of the exploration doesn't make up for it either. Practically every dungeon feels identical. They all have the same paths, the same rocks, the same tedious tunnel layout. Some monsters let you jump or detect herbs or climb vines or and you'll need to switch to select the right one in order to reach new areas. But that's about all they contribute outside of the fights and it never feels necessary. I could totally ignore these spots and still progress fine. This all might change later on, but I'm not holding out hope. I don't know about anything being tedious in any of the dungeons or anything like that. And honestly, with the dungeons that we got being that this is the first chapter and first area and pretty much the tutorial area, 
I felt like they were pretty much varied enough for me to where it didn't feel stale. But hey, you know, I guess that's my opinion. As I play more Monster Hunter Stories 2, I really do hope the story and exploration turn a corner. Maybe the combat will keep me engaged enough to plow on through the dungeon crawling. Plus, Sandra, the Aptonoth that he had no idea that was her name, wouldn't forgive me if I just abandoned her or Phasemon, a monsty prodigy who's joined the legendary Phase organization at only level 8. Unbelievable. That is an absolutely perfect end to a very cringy, cringy attempt at humor throughout the entire article. But honestly, that's that's the thing that I talked about before. I don't. I made another video before about uh, an article that somebody did on the Rise demo. Why do they keep having people? And they they're two different uh, companies, whatever you want to call it, publishers, whatever. But why do they keep having people review these Monster Hunter games that have absolutely no clue what's going on with Monster Hunter? Period. I don't understand that. You're going to get a better review when you have somebody that actually understands what's going on with Monster Hunter and what it is, and they'll actually be able to give you the in-depth information that you need to come out with a conclusion. If you want to try the demo or not, they'll be able to give you everything instead of these cringy, big dragon, raptor chicken kind of articles. It's not good. It's not good, it, and it didn't really give that much, like, didn't say anything about how there's two brand new weapons that are introduced to, into it, didn't go into any kind of the mechanics for those weapons and what differentiates them from one another, and it, it was just bad. It was really, really bad. Didn't talk about elemental stuff, didn't talk about status ailments, anything that really would give you an in-depth look into what Monster Hunter Stories 2 is. And, you know, if you just blandly say, like, hey, it's a turn-based RPG, that's not going to be good enough. Also didn't say anything about, like, the buddy system and whatnot. Like, that's a huge change from 1 to 2 and chains up, it changes up your strategy big time. Nothing about double attacks or anything. So that this is the whole reason that I made this video was just to show exactly why nobody pays attention to these articles anymore and why they have to like bludgeon you with like hey will you accept these cookies and why there's like 800 ads on the page because they're getting desperate and why are they getting desperate because they put out trash like this man just find somebody hire somebody outside of your company or something if you don't have anybody in-house that can do it justice and give you a good review, hire outside. You know what I mean? Get an outside writer or something because this is bad. Really, really bad. Or don't review the game at all. That's also an option too. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Um, you know, I, I just, I have to. I can't help it. You know what I mean? I'm not really going to tell you guys which... Uh, company this is or even the writer or anything. I don't want to make it seem like I'm just trying to straight up trash them or You know ruin anything about what they're doing But I just have to call it out when I see it and this one was again. It was pretty pretty bad But you know how it goes if you're not part of the discord uh, The link is in the description if you want to support the channel the links are in there as well and yeah, I mean <laughs> hopefully Things can get better in gaming journalism, period, and people won't have to strictly rely on YouTube because, you know, you get a lot more unbiased takes. We have a lot of great reviewers on YouTube that people really appreciate and get good information from, but I can't think of a single, like, site or anything that gives me information that I trust or even care to hear from. But yeah, so that's going to be it, guys. Thanks again, uh, and I will see you in the next video.